Hello everybody and welcome to The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly here on Comic Pop Returns. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and give the video a like, it helps us out. I am Sal. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. Hey, remember that time when Marvel was like, oh man, people are really missing Amalgam. Let's do it ourselves. I don't remember that. Well, they I did. I do remember that. Yes, because there's a really crappy comic book called Infinity Wars. Not that Infinity Wars, the other Infinity Wars. The newer Infinity Wars. And during that Infinity War, Gamora smushed the universe in half, and so people were merged. It was just, it was it was a Excuse fake. Me. She folded it folded in half. Folded it in half, yes. Let's jump into three examples because there's two issue miniseries exploiting this concept of infinity warps. We got Iron Hammer, which is Iron Man and Thor, the Arachnite, Spider-Man and Moon Knight, and Soldier Supreme, because they're both named Steve. Ben, you want Iron Hammer? No, but I'll do it. All right. Ben, take it, Iron Hammer. Okay. So, this is Iron Hammer. This is Iron Man and Thor. Written by Al Ewing with uh, art by Ramos Rosanos. Al Ewing didn't get the short end of the hammer here. No? No. Who did? We did. <laughs> True. Because in this... We have Sirgard Stark, who is a Norwegian. Presumably. And, uh, showed up five years ago, mm -hmm. walking out of a storm in a forest. Uh, tell you what, let's not spoil anything. No, please. When we no, see... please, spoil away. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to tell it in order. Oh, no, thank that's God. True. Yeah, just so, Sirgard Stark came out of a forest five years ago in a storm, not knowing who he was. But had this amazing knowledge of technology and uh, all these advancements for Earth, so he became incredibly rich and incredibly famous. All right, it's been five years and I'm incredibly world famous. If I don't know who I am, other people in this world would have obviously heard of me and would have come forward and like been like, oh, you're this? You're, you're this person and I'm your brother, sister, lover, whatever you want to say. Yeah. No one has come forward, so he feels all alone and is incredibly depressed, which is why he's in this igloo bar, drinking by himself. Yeah. He apologizes it's for It's an smashing. ice bar. An ice bar. They do that. That's a thing. You can do Oh, yeah. That. I would like to go to one of these ever since I saw it in Die Another Day. I was like, really? Yeah. I'd like to try it. I think they do them like up in Boston or something like that. Or maybe in Canada. I was going to say, something. definitely Canada or Iceland. Yeah. Well, Greenland? Greenland. Yeah. In, in Greenland! Greenland! <laughs> Sirgard goes out into the storm. The barkeep is like, you don't want to go out there, man. It's really bad out there. And he's like, no, it's okay. I'll go out. I've read to light a fire. He muses that uh, a friend of his uh, went out in a storm much like this, uh, Algram Vanko, and never came back. So he's like, look, I get the risks, but Because one of my dearest friends anyway. died in it, so, you know. Yeah, like the only person who was his friend, because they were also a technological marvel. He goes out in the storm, and he's like thinking and musing about life, and he's like, why does no one remember me? Who am I? What's going on? And he comes upon a forest, and like... Something inside of him is telling him to walk into the forest, and when he does, he is attacked by elves. They fire uh, an arrow into him, he's hit. Uh, Did he roll for initiative? Uh, of course not. No, this is a surprise attack. Yeah. Oh, oh shit. And yeah. it's a poisoned arrow, so you know that's got to have like long-term damage. Yeah, at least for three rounds, he's got to roll for damage. Exactly. Out of the mist comes the Crimson Curse. I have no idea who this is supposed to be. It's the Crimson Dynamo know. and Curse. Yeah. And Curse, <laughs> just Curse. Yeah. Okay, the Crimson. I mean, it's more. Fine. It's, it's it's like the Destroyer, but like it's not. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but the Crimson Curse comes in, and the Crimson Curse is like, I know this man. This is Sir Guard Stark. He's a man of science. We're gonna make him work for us. Yeah. And they're like, oh, of course, Crimson Curse. Whatever you say. Uh, what's that? Lick your balls, Crimson Curse? Oh, anything. These elves are just doing whatever he says. The elves bring him to a place inside the forest. Yep. Where uh, Itri. Itri is there, uh, one of the dwarves. Itri yeah. was like weirdly like big and small depending on the art. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, he's really big. Oh, he's tiny. Oh, what's like, happening? Oh, no. Oh, but he's pretty... Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Like depending on the panel, depending on how big Itri was. So your guard's like, well, if I'm going to die in a couple of days and you're a weaponsmith, we're going to make weapons and we're going to kick their ass and I'm going to get my vengeance. And Itri's like, that's actually great because I'm cursed... So I can't make weapons and then use them against my uh, captors. Captors. He can't do anything to save himself. That's right. But I can make weapons and you could use them. So let's do that. So 
Uh, Stark essentially is like giving him a lesson on circuitry and electronics, and together they create an armor for Stark. And at one point, Stark's having a dream. He sees Madam Hell, who we find out at the end is <laughs> Madam Hella. Yeah, is Ma uh, Hella and, and Madam Mask right. merge together um, to make you think it's Lady Loki. Right, because but but Loki's a main character in Infinity Wars, so it can't he's not merged, so it can't be him. Uh, the armor is done, and Stark is incredibly weak from the poison, and it's going to kill him. But there are runes on the armor that will keep the poison at bay from reaching his heart. Yeah. Much like the arc reactor, and I'm like, that's dumb. <laughs> that also, I was like, once they said, like, there's runes, and they, no, you know what, we'll get into the commentary later. Right now, it's just like, here's what happens. So, <laughs> it's magically suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> <Ding>. <laughs> Stark puts the armor on, and he's just like, oh, it's really heavy, and Eitri's like, well, don't worry. Once you start feeling better, and the runes start working, you're gonna be doing a lot better. Yeah. So, like, the Crimson Curse comes back, and Eitri's like, all right, well, I can't do anything to save myself, but I can at least buy you some time to get the armor on and get your strength. Yep. And he goes outside, and he spits in the face of Crimson Curse. Oh, but he also, he warns, that he's like, oh, but you're not, your armor's not complete until you have this. Yeah, this giant hammer. Yeah. Uh, made out of uh, cold iron, the little that Eitri had left, he because also, it's good against elves. He also yeah. says that he's like keeping the secrets of the Odinson. Yep. So he's like, ah, I'm gonna die anyway. Right. So here's yeah. this. Here's this hammer. So here's this hammer. You go. Go find out who you go are. Go figure it out by. Yeah. Spits but, in his face and uh, yeah. But this is a hammer that Eitri can lift, so apparently he's worthy. <laughs> yeah. The, the worthiness is not a thing anymore. Don't worry <laughs> no, about that. It's not for this. Yeah. It's because I hate this helmet. Mm -hmm. Even though it's reminiscent of Thor's hammer mm. from uh, actual myth and legend, it has the shape. Oh yeah, look yeah. At that. inverted. That's fun. And, like that's a bad shape. <laughs> well, he looks like a a, um, a freaking droid from yeah. A, oh, a battle droid. Yes, thank you. Yeah, thought went into it. It may not be good, but they tried. If they wanted to make this any better, they actually would have had runes going around well, the circle in the center, and they didn't. They did not. They talk about it, I but it's the, like, maybe the oh, runes are in those balls that are glowing. Like you can't see them because maybe they're, they're glowing. on the inside. Yeah, you idiot! They're runes. They're on the inside. <laughs> Listen, this is a this is this looks like a streamlined. This looks like a Batman compared to some other characters who are way over designed. Well, I don't know about that. Anyway, Iron Hammer uh, shoots lightning out of the hammer, knocks Crimson Curse on his ass and then is surrounded by all of these elves. Oh no. So what's he gonna do? He's gonna talk to Heimdall. That's right, the AI inside of his suit, which is part circuitry and part magic maybe. Yes. But it's the heuristic enhanced imaging macro digital awareness for logic and, and logistics. logistics. <laughs> yeah. But it spells Heimdall. But it does technically spell Heimdall. So. Sure. <laughs> So he's like, Heimdall, what do you see? And Heimdall's like, I see all. <laughs> That's how I imagine him talking. Okay. No, it's usually like a voice. No, it should be a fun voice. It should sound like Paul Bettany or something. I can't do a Paul Bettany. Well, I can don't do, do a weird robot. Yeah, be a weird robot then. <laughs> but he's basically, I see elves that are shooting arrows at you. We're yeah, like, just like, all right, well, he, he's like, Heimdall, target them all. And he uses the hammer and like the lightning goes out and hits them all and it's fine. But then the Crimson Curse like comes back. He's oh. like... Yeah, you knocked me down, but you can't just kill me. I'm the Crimson MF and Curse. So they fight for a bit. Uh, Iron Hammer knocks him down again, knocks the helm faceplate off. Oh no. And then sees like, you're Vanko. This is what the elves were talking about. They made you their thrall. Yeah. Even though they listen to you, which makes no good sense. <laughs> well, I think, uh, yes, but I'm gonna guess he's like in the thrall of Malekith. Probably. Yes. There's a hierarchy um, of thrallness. So, like, he sees him, he's like, my friend, don't worry, I'll release you from this pain. And rather than crushing him, which I think would be cool, uh, he uses the... The pommel? Yeah, the, the pommel. Well, the, 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 the stick handle, part of the handle. Of the hammer. This is a giant two-handed sledge, and he uses the stick part to, like, I stab him. I literally jumped up, I'm like, yeah, it's coming down. Yeah, no, nope. I'm gonna stab him in the face! <laughs> it's like, whoa! Shoot. And you're like, Have you ever wow. used a hammer? You Clearly don't not. use the back part. Yeah. Well, no, I'm using uh, I'm, I'm using every part of a hammer. Yeah, I use the top of the hammer to shoot lightning out. 
I use the face of the hammer to knock off the face plate of my opponent, mm -hmm. and then I use the stabby part of my hammer. Yeah. You know the stabby part of the hammer, Tiffany? Yeah, you know. Uh, no. Well, they sound on this hammer. Yeah, because hammers do have stabby parts, but and not some, this hammer. And some hammers do have like a pointy thing at the end. Mm hmm. Uh, but not, not this, this one. But not this one. Yeah, this He's going to have to file that down so he can stab better. So, like, Venko turns into dust, and then we roll back and we see like all of this being shown on a weird orb screen. Mm -hmm. And I'm confused as to who one of these it's, people are. Doesn't it's matter. It's Obadiah Stane yeah. and it's Malaketh. Thank you. Yeah, just Malaketh. Yeah. Just Those Malaketh. two are not well Well, no. Malaketh and the Mandarin. Yeah, yes. like, so it's, it's weird. Because yeah. it's Obadiah Stane, who looks like Charles Xavier, but it's Obadiah Stane, so it's like Iron Man representation. Right. And Malakath Thor. Who is Thor? But, but, but also, he also has the Ten Rings. Right, yeah. Thank which you. are like Mandarin Ten Rings, not the not Shang, Shang Chi Ten, ten rings. rings. Yeah. Yeah. Totally different. Trust so, me. So if you want more. That's Iron Hammer. Iron Hammer. Huh. <sighs> So this is Infinity War Soldier Supreme, uh, written by Jerry Duggan, with art by Adam Kubert. So this takes place, that instead of like setting it during St like Strange's origins, we're going to set it during Steve Rogers' origins. So it is World War II. Right. Um, Steve is going... Stephen. Stephen. Yeah, with a, with a PH. Yeah, because it's... Because it's Stephen Steve, Rogers Steve, with a V. Right. But they never really call him Stephen Rogers. It's just no. really Steve Rogers. It is Steve and Rogers, Stephen Strange. but it is Stephen so with a V. it's Stephen Rogers. Yeah. Um, he's going to go become the be all that he can be because like he can't. He's too tiny. Yep. He can't serve in the military. Um, and so Dr. Erskine. Yep. Who's it, a woman in this? It is a woman in this. It is going to inject him to make him a super soldier. But instead of it being a super soldier serum, it is a magically charged serum. Yes. And so the idea here is they're going to make him a big, huge super soldier, but that can also use magic. Yes. So that's the that's their plan, right? It's a fun idea because, like, it takes the like occult aspect of World War II yep. and, and, and like, and, and she's German yep. and she's using dark arts. Because you look at like the sequence that she's like conjuring, it's like that ain't that ain't like that ain't Merlin magic. No, but it is. It is like current more like it's more Doctor Strange magic, it's yeah. more Aaron magic. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, so she injects him. I love that magic works like that. Yeah. Poop. Poop. <laughs> Done. And immediately, one spy. of the MPs like reveals himself. He's like, "Oh, they've made the Ubermensch. They've done it." And he <laughs> tries to fire at him. Stephen immediately puts his hands up, and he conjures a shield that looks like the Captain America shield, but it's made out of magic. Is able to stop the bullets, and instead, so the guy just goes, "All right, then I'm just gonna kill Doctor Erskine," and shoots her. Yep. Um, Stephen then uh, wrecks this man. Yep. With magic, and is like, "Oh no, <laughs> what happened?" Right. And everyone's like, "Huh." The two people still holding the clipboards at the end of that sequence yeah. kill me. Yeah, they're just, just hmm. like they're still taking notes. I guess we'll just keep going. <laughs> uh, Roll with it. <laughs> I love the sequence here, honestly, of like them testing the magic. Yes. Like they start with a gun, they, then they goes to like a rocket launcher, and then a tank rolls uh, in. <laughs> hey guys, save a couple of these shells with the Nazis. Yeah, come on. Kaboom. Fury. With his friends Dum Dum Fury and Bucky Wong. Bucky Wong. That. Uh, <sighs> So bad. I like what ha I like Bucky Wong. I wish he didn't have that name. Yeah. There should have been James Wong, because it's James Buchanan. Because it's James Buchanan Barnes and Wong. Yeah. I don't know what Wong's first name is. Well, I, I love Wong. He's got the ladies. I yeah. really enjoy that. I'm like, good for you, Wong. Yeah. All right, Wong. Get it. Good, good for you. Seal the deal. Um, but of course, because we're dealing with a Bucky allegory. Um, you know, they go on a mission that nobody wants to take. They're in foxholes, presumably, and they get shelled. And Steven survives. And Wong is and obliterated. Wong is obliterated. Yeah. Um, you know, Dum Dum tries to get him out of his foxhole, and like Dum Dum, like, is sh like he's like, leave. Like Steven's like, get the hell out of here. Go back to your foxhole. I I've got work to do. And right. So he uses his magic basically in seemingly a necromancer style way. Um, later on, we would see the like howling commandos of Hoggoth trudging through the snow, and Dugan's or and and Dum Dum's talking about. The fact that he's like, you need to lead the men, not just fix us up. And he like moves his hat. Oh my god! And yeah. he reveals a bullet hole That's like through the one head. Side. Like he's dead. Yeah, he yeah, died. No, Fury died. Oh. oh, you died. Steven's just bringing these people back. He's clearly tapping into a darker magic yeah. to bring them back because like he's in war yeah. and he can't handle losing a soldier. Right. Right. Or his friends. Right. right. 
So then, like, they get report that Hitler died. Yeah. It's over. It's over, And man. they're like, it's not over for us because we need to deal with the bigger problem, Dormammu Red. Oh, what, th these names, man. Like, these are just first pass names. Yeah. They all are. The, the Howling Commandos of Hoggoth, that's a first idea. The S Soldier Supreme, first idea. The Dormammu Red? Bucky Wong. Bucky Wong. Like, these so, are just first ideas, just, we don't have time. So they, um, they do battle with him, they, they run into him. Um, Steven, of course, like, goes at him yeah. hard. And uh, it's not enough, right? Because, like, Dormammu reveals, he's like, where do you think Erskine <laughs> tapped into to get your exactly. magic? Like, did you think about that for a hot second? I don't think I fight. Yeah. No! No, how would I? I have no research on this. I was just made this. Right, I'm exactly. learning as I go. I had no Look at my one. beard. I don't make good decisions. Well, you know what's funny is, like, this is not indicative of what, of you, what see you see in no. here. That looks more like Dum Dum Dugan on the cover. Yeah. yeah, but, like, in here you see a more developed beard. beard. Yeah. Like he grew into I love that too, because like in the beginning he has the like Stephen Strange mustache yeah. beard. Like he can't grow anything more than that. Right. And then when he gets bigger, he's like, oh. Oh, my, my <laughs> testosterone, testosterone kicked in. I can Perfect. grow a full beard now. <laughs> there yeah. it is. Stephen also being half Steve Rogers never stops fighting. Exactly. And so even when he doesn't have his magic, he still like won't stay down essentially. And so inevitably he like is like any time now. Right. And like Duran was like, what? And that's when Duran is like stabbed through the chest by a bayonet Yes. on the end of Bucky Wong's gun. He is a ghost who has been brought back. He couldn't save him because he, as he didn't have enough of a body. Yeah. Now he's the Winter Soldier. Now right. he's the Winter Soldier, right? And like, I love that because like, Dormammu Red goes like, oh, I thought the Winter Soldier was just a, sto just a ghost story. And he's like, oh, it, it is. It is a ghost story. <laughs> that's, that is super I, fun. And that's fair because like, I think around this time, Bats has been in introduced. Yes. The dog, ghost so. dog it, within Doctor Strange. So mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, all right, we're tapping into that as well. Sorry, what? He's sending them to the dark dimension. And so he sends Strange and Bucky Wong to the dark dimension. We get this amazing page yeah. of just darkness because like a a like really skilled comic book creator is not afraid to do something like this. Yes. Like a, an artist is like, I'm gonna use this. Sometimes I'm, that's good. Sometimes that works. Sometimes, sometimes it, it doesn't, doesn't but like this, this is does. this does. And so like, there's like one fading light at the top, which is clearly Dormammu. Yep. And he's just like, embrace the darkness within. And the two of them are there. And then Wong fades away and he's just alone. And you're like, okay. I love it because that's when Strange comes out, seemingly he'll be in the future. Like he'll be in the present. Like he's, this is, this right. is his trapped in ice. Yeah. Moment. Right. Trapped under ice. Trapped under ice. So that is Soldier Supreme. Yes. Oh, I just knocked him over. You killed I the Soldier. defeated the Soldier Supreme. Oh, uh, gravity was his only downfall. And then we have Infinity Warps Arachnite. And I should also point out, by the way, that it's almost like impossible to find these books because it's called Infinity Wars Story. But also on the cover, it's called Infinity Warps This. And if you look it up, it goes by both titles. Yeah. So you could go, you could look up Infinity Warps Arachnite or Infinity Wars Arachnite. They're both the same book. Because like the P is like... Is like superimposed it's over it. It's coming in. It's, yeah. it's warping in. But like is that... What's the title? Like, you have to pick one. You're a book publisher. Arachnite. Thank you. Infinity War Warps Arachnite is written, of course, by Dennis Hopeless with art by Ale Garza. And it features the idea that Moon Knight and Spider-Man emerged because they were both standing next to each other during that story. Uh, we get an origin for, uh, for, for, for this new character uh, in which Aunt, it's basically Batman. Uh, Aunt May and Uncle Ben are taking Peter to the Natural History Museum. Afterwards, uh, Peter encourages them to take a, uh, a walk through the park. Uncle Ben is like, yeah, let's go for a walk. Aunt May's like, ah, I don't like that idea. And Uncle Ben's like, no, we need to die. Let's go. So they go and they are attacked <laughs> by a goblin monster. Of course, it's the Green Goblin, but also like some thing. Some from, other thing. Some other thing. It's a Moon Knight thing, maybe or not. Who cares? It's, it's a, a werewolf. werewolf. It's a werewolf. Because the moons. Because Moon Knight was first, because Moon Knight first appeared in Werewolf by Night. Right. That's the connection. Okay, that makes That's a lot more sense. Fuzzy. That's why he's fuzzy. I also because he's a werewolf that. at the end of the book. So uh, uh, he attacks Spider-Man, he bit him, uh, or Peter, uh, and then um, uh, Uncle Ben and Aunt May are both killed uh, by the Green Goblin uh, werewolf, and then- uh, By Goblin by Night. By Goblin by Night. And uh, then a spider appears before a dying uh, Peter Parker and is like, and does the Khonshu thing, but it's, I guess it's an on sea. 
Yeah. I it, would hope. It, it, it oh. should be a non-seed. But it doesn't feel like it because I don't think they say it at all. No, they but don't. the spider bites Peter and makes the deal. And I'm like, that's... Like on the eyeball? Because that shape... That shape. I'm like, what is that? That shape and color. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, why? What? That so, ain't his cheek. So, that ain't his nose. But uh, in biting him, it also fragments his mind into three personalities, which is not Moon Knight. I but, thought it was but, like four personalities. Yeah, because there's also not... the spider. Like the spider is a personality. Like... Like, con like Anansi is in there. Well, I thought there was also just Peter. Well, there's the scientist. There's the scientist? Who was also born here, so I think, or like, he, he was the one who went to the museum. So I think the oh, scientist okay. is the original Peter. There's the, like... The, the CEO. The CEO, who's like smart. Yeah, and the knight. And the knight, who's like the superhero. Yeah. But there's, there's like the friendly knight, and then there's like the fighting knight. Because like, there's, there's the one that's... Spider Man, oh, yeah. and right. then there's the one that will also like kill people. But then there's like, but and like, the scientist can't be the the funny one. No, but the he, scientist also can't fight either. But he also says like, and then like I started hearing voices in my head. So yes. I'm like, so there has to be the original one. Right, too. like he's hearing those voices, but he's also he also is those voices. So I assume this is friendly neighborhood. R right, but they say no because they say the, the the scientist was born here. Like the scientist is the one who remembers the goblin. You know, like the scientist is the one who wants to fight the goblin at the end of, the, of this issue. No, but they all, no, I think they all remember. The well, they science, all... No, the scientist is the one that gets let out at the end of the issue and then like can't do it. Right, well, because he's not, he can't fight or anything, but he's the one who was like the first one. I think the scientist is the original. I don't think so. He fights a Morbius hodgepodge character. He's Michael Morpheus. He's the friendly neighborhood arachnite, but then when he needs to like, really put the per the hurt on him, then he becomes the other one, like the knight. Mm -hmm. So I guess there's the Iraq and the knight. Whatever. So, uh, he, he, you know, this is the more, like, vengeful one. This is the Moon Knight version of it. Yeah. But he beats him, and then it turns out that, like, Harry, whatever his fake name is. Uh, he's, um, he's, what's his name? He's, he's, he's Frenchy. Yeah, so he's uh, Harry Russell. Harry Russell. Oh, no, but Harry oh, but Russell that's is right. Jack, Jack Russell. Russell. Yeah, so Jack Russell, who is Werewolf by Night, yeah, that's right, Jack Russell, is the real name of a fucking dog man. But uh, yeah, so Harry must be Jack Russell, so he will eventually become a werewolf as well. Or, his, or Norman's Jack Russell. Norman's, yeah. No, and but they call just, him Norman. Yeah, they do. Or Norman so, Russell. Well, so it's Norman Russell becomes werewolf by night, or yeah. goblin by night. Yeah, 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 but he's also a Russell. But he's also a Russell. So Harry is a combination of Frenchie and the offspring of werewolf by night. And, and Harry. And Harry Osborn. So uh, he's a friend of Peter, and he helps him out, and he's like his right-hand man. He helps him as a superhero and also in his company. Then we meet Marley Jane, who works with Peter and might be his girlfriend or not. She's, not, she's in the book for one panel. But Peter runs Parker Industries, which is also like another thing from like, you know, the Marvel Universe and the comic books. Uh, and, you know, he's just, he's, he's, He's doing science. That's it. He's just and he's, he's making money a, off of it. Making making money, having a great time. Uh, he's got to go on a business meeting. He's got to get to a private jet. Harry keeps like pushing him to do it. They get in the car. They're like an hour late. Uh, Harry gets a call from his father Norman, who's like, "I'm freaking out." And uh, Harry's like, "I don't have fucking time for this. I got to go back on a plane. We're already late." Peter encourages him to go. They go to Norman's place, and he becomes. The goblin by night, I guess we're gonna call well, him that. Yeah, Norman. Well, Norman like, is that because Norman's there and like he's having a hard time, so he needs his son to come by. Right, because his son is obviously like facilitating his like cha his transformations. Though no one's made a sighting of the goblin by night since the passing of the Parker. But uh, when Peter, of course, sees him, he freaks out and he turns on, he puts on his costume, which I guess is magic based because it just transforms. Maybe it's techno organic or maybe whatever. It yeah, like, yeah, it like seems to come out of his. Phone? Right, like it, 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 it's it's technologically. Yeah, it comes from the web. Yeah, ha ha ha. So, uh, but you know, Peter's got like he's sorry. He he is focused because he's like this is the guy who killed Aunt May and Uncle Ben. Like I gotta get this guy. So, I've been waiting for years. And Harry's like, please don't. You don't understand. So he you know oh. he, yeah. So he chases him. The goblin attacks him. The goblin doesn't give any information whatsoever. He just scratches his face to reveal that he's Peter. But you know, only the goblin probably. The noticed. goblin also doesn't talk. No, he doesn't talk. But, uh, yeah, Peter's, like, got the goblin down for the count, and then he gets tased by Harry, who's like, you don't understand, Peter. He's my father, and I love him, and I gotta protect him, and I'm sorry. And it's like, you see, you get this impression that, like, you know, Harry hasn't been working for Peter, like, you know, unaltruistically. Like, he does work for him, but also he's been facilitating his father's, like, you know, horrible curse. And so, uh, you know, he takes, he takes Norman with him away, and this is when you're like, oh, he's a werewolf. Like, he's got the werewolf ears, he's got the werewolf clothes, like, yeah. it's a whole thing. So, yeah, and that's the issue. Yeah. 
it's just it's just a quick little like done in one. Here's the origin. Here's the fight. Here's the universe. It's very reminiscent of Spider Boy, where it's like here's yes. the whole universe. I'm gonna throw the kitchen sink at you. Here's a bazillion different little characters. It's all in service of the joke, which is that we're merging these things. Well, yeah, that's it. That's it was it. fast. It was it's a fast read, uh, but there's only, there's another issue. Every one, of, every one of these has All these have one more issue left that does wrap it up, forgivably. We are not doing them. We're not going to do them. Uh, so that's that. Forget the part two. So the question is, which one's the good, the bad, and the ugly, as is the conceit of this show? Uh, nominations. Okay, so this was my good, my bad, my ugly. That is also my assessment. Me too. Well, this is my good. Yes. Oh, no. The Rack Knight was the ugly for me. Okay. This was... This is my this good. This is lazy. Yeah, no, like that, Iron that's... Hammer was like silly, and I was like, "This is like Al Ewing's better than this." He is, but like, I don't think it's my ugly. It's not my, but Iron no. Hammer's not my ugly. No, 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 I, I agree. This is my good. This is my bad, and this is my ugly. Yeah. That's and like, I was really so like, listen, like, I know this is silly and dumb, right. but like, I didn't think it was as bad as you were giving it a hard time for. That's why I wasn't saying much. And here's why: this is set in the 1940s. Right. Like, yeah. Of course it's going to be it's like, like that. It's like hokey. It yeah. is hokey. It's it hokey like the origins of Steve Rogers. I don't even like, think it's hokey. Like the origins of Doctor Strange. Like there's something about it, like ridiculous long names. Like if you've been reading Doctor Strange, the Howling Commandos of Hoggoth don't really make you blink an eye. No, that's okay, No, true. that was dumb though. Yeah. I don't think so though. <laughs> like if you think about like the like the Wand of Watoom and the, you know. I would have called them the Hounds of Hoggoth, just trim it down a little bit. But like, sure. yeah. I, I will begrudge the like the the first draft nature of most of the naming. Yeah. But the execution is fun. The art, of course, elevates it significantly. Sure. Because exactly. it was I was like, this is not like a game for no, Kubrick, like, but it's still serviceable. It's not yeah. like it's not like you did the outlines and someone else had to do the finishes. No, this and like exactly like Kubrick what book. you said when I reread this, I was like, oh, it is kind of smart to set it here because of the nature of like Hitler's obsession with, with the occult with the occult and so to pull that in to be like like there's so many other properties who've done something similar to this where it's like we were also working on that like yeah. see Hellboy see anything yeah. like you know what I mean like so to to be like you know what let's take Rogers and let's throw Stephen Strange in there and make him be a magical force and focus on yeah. like the occult side I'm like that's kind right, of fun it's, it's Doctor Strange with 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 Captain America's heart, yes, and his like and and the trappings of World War II, like Bucky Wong, terrible name, yeah. great execution. At the end, in my opinion, right when he was the Winter Soldier, yeah, when yeah. he comes back as the Ghost, I was like, that's, that's awesome. cool. Yeah. When I saw Erskine preparing for yeah. the pre the surgery and all that, or the injection, yeah. yeah, when she's in her little lair, yeah, that I was like, this is dope. No, neither when of I these. saw the soldiers, yes. when I saw like. Fury, oh, Fury being with the bullet yeah, hole. The bullet hole that yeah. was, and it was great because it's showing, not telling. Like, yeah. you he, just, you he just says, noticed. I appreciate the eye. Right, but you're like, he died. Yeah, that is, <laughs> yes. that is through the head. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So, like, this has some excellent elements to it when he when they're fading away into the darkness. In oh, the dark yeah. Dimension. I didn't it's even good. know it was the dark dimension. I was just like, yeah. they're being put someplace. Yeah, right, I thought the they dark. were being put into a pocket dimension or something, but yeah. That's what sold me on this, where I was like, I want to read more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't want more of these. I don't want more of these, and neither of these had any moments like we're complimenting in this. Like, there are, uh, there's at least one moment that everyone can agree is like, okay, that's kind of cool. Like, I don't like Dormammu Red as a name, no. but I really like his execution yeah. because Dormammu is like a god and yet he's petty and like jealous and simple in this yep. because he's merged with like right. Schmidt. Yep. And I love that idea. He's cool too. Like it's it's really easy to combine the fiery like Element of Dormammu and a skull and man. And a skull man, yeah. I mean, yeah. And they also didn't make him look like Ghost Rider, no. which is impressive. Yeah. I'm like, good it's for you. It's hard to do when you're talking about skull flaming men yeah. in, Mar in Marvel. And uh, I, got, I got to tell you, that moment, like, I, I know we already mentioned that, like, the, the, you know, like, oh, they're all, like, they've all died. They've and all died. And he's brought them back. And it's like, that Steve's heart, or that, yeah, that Steve's heart and Stephen Strain's, like, I, I have the ego, I can do that. Yeah, The hubris. Like, right. I, I like, can This is all going to come to bite us in the ass when, like, he comes to the present, and I don't, I don't know, I've never read the next one. But I don't like, remember. Be, it would be kind of amazing if it's like, they couldn't die. Right? right? Like, like, you cursed us. You cursed us. We're, 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 we're corpses. Right. The, sor the Soldier Supreme costume is a mess. It is a lot. He's got redundant buttons that represent only Doctor Strange stuff. Like, he's got the Seal of the Vashanti on one button, yeah. and the Eye of Agamotto on the other, and it's yep. like, pick one. 
Yeah. Well, they want to do theirs. They're trying to clearly give him more of a, like, heroic cape as opposed to, like, his sorcerer's cloak. Yes. Like, they're trying to make him look more iconically like a superhero, even though Captain America does not have a cape at all. Nope. So I think they're trying to make you think America, cape, yeah. but, like, make it look like a cape, so they're right. trying to give the buttons. Well, it plus, should have just been a leather red coat, that, right. like, a, like a bomber jacket. Yeah, that would have been fun. That also, like floated or helped him fly or that's my bad just because it's like there were parts of it that i enjoyed yeah i, I was like I, I i applauded the execution of being like yes you've done it you have you have thorified tony stark's origin you made well like you know what it is i like the very beginning and i like the very end mm. and i really didn't care about the journey in between so yeah. that's why i was like that's not my ugly no i i didn't really care about anything that happened but i also wasn't like ugh, like just ugh. heimdall Heimdall is really hurt. Heimdall got me though. I'm like, ha, stupid. <laughs> Yay. I like, like that you laughed a little bit, like, okay. Yeah, you got me back. You got me. You really back oh. in with Heimdall. And you made it all fit. And this, it's like, I don't know, there just wasn't a whole lot here. I did, like, the thing I liked the most about this was right at the end, just the panels of him becoming man again. Mm -hmm. I was like, the art thought in this is fine, yeah, but for fine. some reason, like, this guy's ability to draw him as like an old man, like just a weak, frail. I was like, that's really good. I agree. No, I think actually the art across the board, everybody did a great job uh, executing. I, I wasn't a big fan of all of this art. Like uh, it's a little stiff. It 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 reminded me a lot of Spider Boy, where it's like it's because yeah. Spider Man is so like youthful looking and yes. childlike, even well, though he's like an adult. It reminded me of uh, what was it, the Spider God stuff. Oh, from like the other and stuff. Yeah. Okay. That's what it reminded me of. I wish it did. Like I I kind of wish they'd merged. Khonshu and like the other, yeah, you know, made it like a giant spider god and mm -hmm. had him be like an asshole. You know, like there, there's some potential there for a premise that I hate. Like this, I, I will, you will never convince me this is a good idea because it's just all of this is a testament to Marvel's greed and refusal to work across the aisle with their competitors mm -hmm. to make something that the audience literally has been asking for for 20 years. Like yep. all they want is for them to do another amalgam. I don't even like amalgam. And all the audience wants is more amalgam, or at least another amalgam, like mm -hmm. another. And they're like, can we do it with ourselves? The inherent premise of amalgam is that it's Marvel and DC together. That's, mm -hmm. that, is, that is where the idea comes from. To merge two Marvel characters is inherently bankrupt. Con bankrupt. It's a conceptless idea. But because they executed it and they gave it to like real creators, the audience was tricked and bamboozled into thinking that it's actually an idea, as opposed to a deliberate attempt to just to just circumvent the thing that the audience is actually asking for. And so I'm like, fie on you. That being said, you know, like, did you create art out of it? Technically, yes. You have given it to artists who have executed it in a way that can be read and enjoyed and absorbed. And, and for that, you have done it. But there's a Funko Pop of these characters, so uh, you clearly didn't do it for the art. You did it for the moolah. Of course. So, you know, it's all terrible, but... <laughs> Soldier Supreme. There are redeeming qualities to it, yes. but the concept itself and the overall execution it's creatively bankrupt is not worth it. No, mm. no, and like they and they even have the audacity to steal from the all access crossover ending, in which they put the Amalgam universe in a pocket dimension to preserve it as though it always existed, and then they did it again with this, where they were like, we have to save them. And so there is another reality in the Marvel Universe in which the Infinity Warps never stopped. And so these characters continue in that so, universe. So like, do you want more? Right. No. And we'll see you guys next time on an all new episode of GBU, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. I'm Sal. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. So long and keep reading.